My name is John Wilson. I was born on October 10, 1904, in Salina, Ohio, United States. There, I met the missionaries of the precious blood who worked in my parish. As a teenager, I decided to follow my vocation, entering the seminary of the missionaries. I was ordained a priest on May 3, 1930. After several years fulfilling the tasks entrusted to me by my congregation, in August 1940, I offered to work as an army chaplain. In May 1941, I was assigned to the military base in the Philippines. A short time later, on December 7 of the same year, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. This was what finally involved the United States totally, in World War II. My military company was imprisoned, and we were sent to prison camps in the Philippines. I participated in the horrendous and infamous Bataan Death March in April 1942, in which we were forced to walk nearly 90 miles, with some 70,000 other prisoners, most of them malnourished or sick, and in poor condition. It is estimated that between 5 and 8,000 people died of exhaustion, or were simply summarily executed during the journey. Later, the years of imprisonment and torture followed, until we were released around 1945. The war ended in 1945. In 1946, I finished my service as an army chaplain. Turning the page, at this difficult stage of my life, I wanted to tell you that back in the United States, the missionaries of the precious blood decided to respond to the invitation of Pope Pius XII, exploring the possibility of extending our apostolate to foreign missions. It was this that led by the director of the then American province, Father Joseph Marling, together with Father George Spaeth, and myself, we began in December 1946, an exploratory trip through various countries of South America. Already before our departure, all the contacts had been made with the bishops of the diocese that we would visit. One of them, until then the favorite, was the Diocese of Cali, in Colombia. Our flight itinerary took us from Miami, United States, to Barranquilla, Colombia, where we arrived on December 13, 1946. Once there, we had to wait two days, until we took the other flight to Medellin, Colombia. The memory I have of Barranquilla is that it was terribly hot and humid. Father Marling wrote in his journal that we bathed up to ten times a day. Once in Medellin, we got in touch with diocesan Father Miguel Salazar, who took us with his car and driver, visiting different places in this beautiful and refreshing city, for now. The next day, we took the flight to the capital, Bogota, where we met the nuncio's secretary, since the nuncio was in Rome. We were also able to meet with the archbishop of the city. After a couple of days in Bogota, we continued our trip to the long-awaited Cali. As I had pointed out before, we were very interested in this city, wanting to start our mission in South America. In the afternoon of the same day of our arrival, we managed to get an interview with the local bishop. According to what Father Marling recorded on his journal, this would be one of the most disappointing interviews of his entire life. The bishop did not want or need any priests from the United States. As he told us, he had grown tired of waiting, having made the request two years before, and now he had priests of Belgian origin, who attended to his needs. Father Marling's explanations were in vain, in which he reminded the bishop that there was a commitment from the missionaries of the precious blood for 1947, as had been previously discussed with his delegate who went to the United States. Everything was useless, and the truth is that we did not feel welcome. The meeting lasted only 15 minutes. When we returned to the hotel, you could breathe an air of desolation and discouragement amongst us. We even planned to immediately return to the United States and end this adventure. I suggested that perhaps we could explore the Asian continent, instead of wasting time here. Finally, common sense and apostolic zeal prevailed, and we decided to continue with our established itinerary. 
After several brief stopovers on the flight, we arrived in Lima, Peru, on December 22, 1946, and stayed until Christmas Day. We met with Cardinal Juan Gualberto Guevara, who was happy with the possibility of having North American priests for his diocese. On our itinerary we had the city of Buenos Aires, Argentina, but we had to make a technical stopover for a few hours in Santiago, Chile, before crossing the Andes. We flew from Lima in a four-engine clipper airplane at midnight on Christmas Day, and after seven hours of flight, we arrived in Santiago, at dawn on December 26, 1946. The next day, we planned to continue our trip to Buenos Aires. Santiago was never in our plans, but the providence of God showed us another way. To kill the waiting time, it occurred to me to call the United States military attaché, Colonel Cleland, who gladly welcomed us at his house with a family lunch. Upon returning to the hotel, Father Marling wanted to take the opportunity to take a tour of the Archdiocese's offices of Santiago and greet Auxiliary Bishop Augusto Salinas, a reference that someone had given him. The bishop received us kindly, but only for five minutes, since he was busy in a plenary assembly with all the bishops of Chile. We said goodbye, and as we were leaving, a thin and tall priest called Joaquin Fuenzalada approached us who we later learned was the secretary of Cardinal José María Caro. Father Joaquín asked us, in broken English, if we wanted to see Cardinal José María Caro. We told him that we didn't have an interview scheduled with him, and we didn't want to bother him. But he asked us to follow him through the halls of the building, and before we knew it, we were inside the Cardinal's office. The Cardinal was in the office talking with a Monsignor, whom his secretary literally escorted out, leaving us with this kind, smiling and affectionate person that we never thought to find. Shortly after, the cardinal took out a map of the city, which he placed on the table, and began to offer us different places where we could serve. Father Marling had to rub his eyes, since he was a little tired, to realize if what he was hearing and seeing was true. The conversation continued with the cardinal's gratitude to God, because he had heard his prayers, given the need for priests. Then he asked us if we could have dinner with him that evening. He immediately provided us with his car with a driver, who then gave us a quick tour of the city, even taking us to his house to eat at night. There, we met three other bishops, also very interested. We were able to stay one more day in Santiago, and we had other meetings with more bishops. The next day, we continued on our way, with interviews in Buenos Aires and then in Sao Paulo, Rio de Janeiro and Belen, all in Brazil, and in some Caribbean islands. But the decision was almost made. We wanted to open a mission in Chile. Then, Father John Costic and I, were sent to Chile, in September 1947. Thus, a new mission began. Thank you.